biomedical. So it's already in place, and we have one more class we have to add, and hopefully that will, that's, that's under consideration. So. Um, they've added more dual credit CTE courses, our welding courses, our YER uh, have been and are dual credit. Um, of course, the celebration of the radio station. And uh, when that happened and I sent it to the state, they're very excited. They would love to have something out this way because everything uh, with Tech Ed is usually back towards Topeka. So hopefully sometime this year they'll have a drive-in or some type of training, if not this year, next year, because they really want to highlight uh, what we've done there. And then um, this is something that I'm not involved in very much right now. It's a grow your own in our teaching and our training. And I know that um, uh, Mr. Hogan has talked about that. But really, we're looking at how can we help our students get their associates, leave our high school with that background, get their associates at Garden City Community College, and then um, go on to whatever four-year they want to um, articulate with four Ks, um, um, four M, Wichita State or K State. So, um, just uh, just to compare last year and this year, our numbers are up for Career and Tech Ed. Our unduplicated count that means just what it says, unduplicated. 1,501 students out of about 2,160 are in a tech ed class. And if you uh, look at duplicated, almost uh, 2,600 um, students in a tech ed class. Very popular, very hands-on, and challenging. I hope a lot of them are challenging. Um, our Perkins allocation went up a little bit, but I can tell you just from about six or seven years ago, it was around 113,000. So we're trying to, we're serving way more students, about 1,000 more with um, about $40,000 less. One of the, the other opportunities um, that we have is the partnerships. They're growing, and I have to give credit to the Building Bridges. I have to give credit to our staff because they're the ones that work with advisory councils. Um, they invite classroom speakers in. Um, they have our students go out to job shadow or in a work um, experience that's during school or after school hours. Um, we have many of the industry visits and company tours and that would not be possible if we couldn't get them scheduled on the buses or the vans. Um, externships for teachers during the summer, we usually have four to six teachers that go out in industry and learn a little bit more as far as what ex the expectations are. Um, so um, all in all, partnerships are critical, I think, to the growth of our, of our CT program in all of our schools, and I think the community wants to be involved. Our next Building Bridges will be in January. Tentatively, it's the last Monday of the month, but we'll have that set pretty quick, so. I think that's... Quick question yes, Job sir. Shadow. Uh, who supervises that? How does that the work? Job Shadow is individually or it's through the classroom. Work experience is through Mrs. Ackerman, but Job Shadow, the students can ask to Job Shadow um, but in, for example, in the energy pathway, they all will jump shadow. That's just an expectation in that class. So that's how that's set up. There aren't, there aren't any, let's say, um, I guess a program or plan that everyone can go do it, but anyone can do it if they, if they ask. We can help get that set up. And from Building Bridges last year, there were oh, approximately, I don't know, 150 people that probably came, we were not sure on the count, but we had 102 people that signed, business and industry people that signed up to say, I will do something. I will do any of these things. I'll be on a council, I'll mentor a student. You can come job shadow at my place. A teacher can and come spend a week and, and do an externship. So um, they all volunteered. We had a kind of an end of that uh, pathway, or end of that building bridges questionnaire, and they filled in their name and if they wanted to participate. Hopefully that's going to improve and we're going to grow that as well. So, But we have to contact them and make sure that, you know, they know that, we know that they know that they did sign up and that we appreciate that, so how can we use them? Because if you sign up for something and no one calls you back, you know, we, we want to make sure that, that we do let them know that um, we're planning some um, additional um, uh, activities, whatever that might be that they sign up.
our goals. You know, it's theirs ultimately. We want to make sure that we can provide them with what they need so that they're ready for the next step. So I think we're doing amazing with the programs we have. So thanks for your for what you're doing, Deb. It's the staff. It's the staff. The it's the whole team. Everybody in the board. Every board. level. It does take everyone. Yeah. It really does. And the, and the community as well. Because they're letting us know what they need.
Um, the next is um, new business and discuss public comment time procedure. Dr. Carmen, do you want to start this? Uh, sure. Earlier this fall, we had a situation where we had a uh, person come and share some information at our public comment uh, session. And, you know, uh, basically, they were kind of crunched with the five minutes uh, uh, time period that the board used. And so, uh, Laura uh, asked that I look into that. obvious to people that we do want uh, participation in our meetings and we, we are interested in, in, in what the public uh, uh, thinks and, and information that they want to share with the board. So uh, I sent you out a little bit earlier today. We actually do have a board policy that is BCBI that relates to public participation. Uh, and it, uh, it does, um, it, it is consistent with our practice when people come to our meetings minute period where they can make public comments, but it also goes on that um, if we have an issue that um, uh, may need a little bit more time with uh, policy recommends at least five days prior notice, we can actually place um, the, uh, that item on the agenda uh, and allow 10 minutes, and then the board has the discretion to even allow additional
someone could move to add them to the agenda for later that evening so we could actually do that conversation justice if it's time sensitive. Um, otherwise, we can add them to an agenda at a, at a future meeting. But that would be an easy thing to do just to make sure that we had the opportunity because I don't want to entertain. I like our policy that we don't entertain a discussion and a debate during that time, but there are, there are a lot of good points brought up during, those, during that opportunity, and I want to make sure that we do right by the public service, by the, by the person who's bringing it forward to us. So that's just a thought. <laughs> you know, first of all, solid points, Gloria, and, and I commend you, Laura, for, for two things. First of all, uh, when it first came up, uh, sort of maintaining the position of the board that this is a board meeting and not a public hearing for and, and so certainly we want to conduct board business then also come back and say, but there clearly is this, uh, this need to consider uh, timely information to the board, but also consideration of the board for that information. So, but in an orderly framework and, and still preserving the fact that this is a meeting of the board. Um, and then, so Gloria's points, I think, are, are a good thing to consider. And then uh, certainly should be part of the regular, this heading of, that speaks of delegation, expression, answer, public comments, recognition, and committee reports. Some of those, I think, should be part of the regular agenda, so should come after approval of agenda. But I'm wondering if delegations and public comments, because our language in the delegations, um, which to me would, sounds like more than one person coming, a group of people coming to address the board with a spokesperson or someone like that. Um, but um, if we maybe move delegations and public comment to be, and then to approve the agenda, and then if the remaining Yeah. 
Dr. Silk. <laughs> we do have the board open discussion, so it seems like if there is something that is done in public comments, that that person could be invited by a board member to participate or to continue speaking in open discussion meeting. So I know that might be out there, actually. And you can always I didn't know we had a policy, so that also also helped. You know, you know, maybe just tweaking that policy and working with Dr. Carl and the person. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can speak to that. I
lots of lots of our students for, uh, came and uh, viewed the session, uh, the, the oral argument session. So I, I, I agree, it was wonderful. And, and Renee and, and uh, a lot of people in the, in the district also helped. Uh, our theater people, uh, Mr. Bernal helped with the live streaming. Mrs. Burton's students provided the catering, and uh, the list goes on. I received a letter from Chief Justice Ness um, at the office, um, not necessarily related to this part of my job, um, commending us and saying what a great experience and how flawlessly it went out off and without a hitch. And it's like all we had to do was show up. It was great. <laughs> so um, I think we've impressed seven people. And even though they've gone out in the, in the, across the state to do this before, this was the first high school. and see the outcome of the oral arguments. I know. I want to know exactly. KSCourts.org. All right. Every Friday between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Every lawyer is patiently waiting for the case new cases to come down. So, so if, um, you, if you check it out, we I will see what I on. So that we yeah. don't all have to check it out. <laughs> I will. Anything else? Mark? Just I think it's notable uh, the busy time Such a, was this year was a little earlier than last year. I thought it worked well, uh, particularly the high school where, where I'm involved as far as the parents, but hopefully it worked well across the district. And uh, uh, just an important time for communication and everything I heard seemed to go well. And kudos to the teachers and everybody involved for that process. Anything else? activities going on, lots of kids traveling all over the state. Um, we want to give a shout out to our volleyball team who qualified for the state tournament the first time I think in 10 years. Um, we had great results from cross country. Um, our band is uh, kind of on their um, challenging week where they're in three different competitions and I, I know they uh, haven't heard results from that yet, but I know they received a lot of at, at the last so uh, they're certainly on the right track. So uh, our debaters and forensics teams were busy. I think I got three or four emails with different results. So they've got kids out uh, uh, doing well, qualifying for their state competition already. So lots of great things happening. And the hatchet game is Friday, correct? Correct. Come early and get a good seat. Yeah. Well, this will also depend.
Um, the next meeting of the Board of Education will take place on Monday, November 16, 2015 at 6 p.m. in the Board Meeting Room, the Educational Support Center. Um, I believe we have a need for an executive session about 